Good morning. If you're new here, hello, my name is Erin. I'm a homeschool mom to three kiddos and we are in our fifth year of homeschooling. Today we're going to be talking about how our homeschool year has been going so far. We are officially halfway through. We reached day 90 um, midway through this week and we are chugging along and overall things have been going well. So yeah, stick around if you'd like to hear a little bit of an update about how this year has been going, things that have changed and things that are not going to be changing. Um, so yeah, thanks for being here. Before we get too far into talking about the school year, I did want to mention that this video is in collaboration with some other homeschool moms that are also posting their mid-year homeschool updates. I will post the playlist down below, so go check out that list after you have watched my video. And the hosts for today's collaboration topic are Devine from Calm in the Chaos Homeschool and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. I will also link their channels down below, so go say hello to them. And yes, thank you both for hosting today. I'm looking forward to watching through the playlist as well to see how everybody else is doing and how school is going for them. So as I mentioned in the beginning, my name is Erin. So welcome if you are new here. I'm so happy that you found my video. I have three kiddos ages 10, seven, and four, a fourth grader, a second grader, and a toddler preschooler. We'll talk about her in just a little bit here and I will update you on how preschool things are going for her. So we have been homeschooling for, this is our fifth year. We did kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth with my oldest. So he's in year five of being homeschooled. We live in Pennsylvania. So we do have to follow a lot of state guidelines. I've posted previous videos about those things. If you're interested in hearing about how those guidelines have gone or how they go and what I have to do to register my kiddos. I will link some of those videos down below as well so you can go check them out. So because I live in Pennsylvania we are required to track 180 days of schooling lessons what we consider learning. So we are officially on we just completed day 92 so we have crossed over the midway point in our homeschool year so let me tell you a little bit about what's been going on with us if you're new here you may not have seen some of my other videos but some of you who are not new know that our family did just move at the end of october we moved into a new home which was only about four minutes down the road from our, our other home so we're still in the same city we're still in the same state um, however, I did need to change school districts, which was really odd um, because we're close to the school district that we lived in before. For some reason, the way the boundaries are, I did have to switch districts, which wasn't a big deal. I may make a video on that and what I needed to do, how I did it, things like that. But it was basically just a resending of all of my forms and all of my papers. And that is about it, just contacting the new school district. So once we moved, I did need to do that, but it did not interrupt or affect any of our schooling days. Just a little bit of work on my part. So as far as the whole move um, and how it affected school, I initially didn't think it would affect a whole lot because you're homeschooled, you can do school anywhere. And it didn't really affect much. We did um, take off a couple days of school when we actually did move just because of everything going on. But as far as um, the mental energy that went into thinking through a move and purchasing a new home and the emotions that go with that, we were in our previous home for 11 years. So there was, you know, emotional things going on and it was, it was a good decision. It was a good move for us. Um, but still it was emotional because it's the home that all of my kids have, have known for so long. So those things, and then the physical part of it, there was just a lot that went into it. And then just trying to school in the midst of all of that was a little bit challenging. It, it still wasn't horrible. So how I survived that was really giving our family flexibility to only do what was necessary. So for a lot of that time, um, I just put off 
um, the things that weren't super pressing. So like history and science, most days took the back burner and then our extracurricular stuff as far as music and art and um, health, those kind, those things just kind of came and went as we could fill them in. Now art can be involved in many different areas. We use the Good and the Beautiful handwriting course, so if you're familiar with that, you know that there's little art snippets at the end of every single lesson. So I, those are very small and very minimal, and here and there we'd enter in a drawing lesson, um, the kids are arts and crafty on their own. So we just kind of counted those things for a few weeks as those extracurricular and just, you know, just went with that. And that was all we physically could do as far as making sure that our other home was kept up with and straightened up in case there were house showings. And then just the, the mental energy that went into me needing to make sure that um, everything was lined up for the purchase of a new home and we were still trying to sell our original home. So it was just a lot of mental bouncing back and forth in a lot of different areas and everything kind of happened really quickly. So when we first started our school year, it, we did not have plans to move. Sorry guys, after reviewing this and editing it, I did want to just touch base about the timeline. We had already signed the contract at the beginning of our school year, but things were still in motion and still not 100% for sure. So there was still a lot of mental stuff going into it at that point. Which that was mid-September. Um, but by the end of October, we had moved. <laughs> so there was a lot that was going on in that time frame so that was like i said we moved at the end of october and then our other home sold at the end of november and then there was thanksgiving and there was christmas and some sickness so it's been a little jumbled and i would say at the beginning of the year but we are all doing fine we are tracking days just fine and my kids are learning and we are growing as a family and I feel like we're finally able to start settling into a new routine and start adding back in those extracurriculars, um, which we have started to do. And a few things that have changed that we have that I have taken out from my initial curriculum videos. I had mentioned that Easton would be doing a computer course through Easy Peasy. We haven't been keeping up with that. To be honest, he is it just seemed like it was kind of silly stuff for him to be doing. He knows a lot about technology already. He does a lot on his own. Um, he has friends that are very advanced in electronics and technology. And so I just felt like it was kind of pointless for him. I'm not saying that the course was terrible or pointless, but for him, he already knew a lot of it. So that was one that got eliminated. We haven't picked back up with that. Zoe has not been doing the thinking course from Easy Peasy. We just here and there throw in some things for her to do as far as um, those games and things go. But again, that was something that was not completely necessary for me to push. So that has been eliminated. And then our piano lessons uh, have been paused for now. I would like to start back up with that in the next coming weeks. But again, it was just something that just wasn't completely 100% necessary as far as the keyboard being set up and things like that. So hopefully that can be started again in the upcoming weeks because I do feel like that is something that is important and the kids want to get back into that. So hopefully we'll be able to start getting in the routine of those lessons here shortly. As far as everything else, I believe we are back into the swing of things. And as far as missing some of those days, so when I mentioned that we just did things that were necessary within those weeks of moving and selling and all of all of that stuff that goes with that, we were just doing necessary. So um, like English, reading, math, and then maybe one day we would do history, the next day we would do science and just kind of alternate. We did miss some lessons in there. So in our workbook for a lot of our subjects, we are on the on lesson say 76 to 85 maybe but we're on day 92 of school so the way i will handle that is i will start to probably closer to the end of the year 
I will kind of start to pick and choose what I really want to hit on before the end of the school year and then kind of eliminate maybe some things that they don't need work on. So let's say Zoe right now is reviewing telling time and hundreds, tens, and ones. If I feel like the next couple lessons are going over both of those things, she is a little more comfortable with telling time than hundreds, tens, and ones. I will have her do maybe two lessons in telling time and four lessons in hundreds, tens, and ones. And then we'll just skip over what I feel like she's comfortable with. So I'll just start to do that as the end of the year comes to um, comes a little more into focus and the same with Easton. We will maybe skip over a portion of some things that he's comfortable with and hit harder on something that he needs a little more attention with. So that's kind of how I compensate to kind of fit in everything that we need to fit in before the end of the year. And then as far as history and science, I will do the same thing. So I will just start to kind of eliminate maybe those extra little lessons that I feel like we've gone over this enough. Now we can move on to the next to the next portion of what we'll be learning about and um, things like that. It does bother me slightly that we don't finish workbooks completely and we don't complete every single lesson, but I'm learning to be more flexible and just the reality of it is we this year we physically could not do every single lesson just with what was um, going on in our world and I have to be okay with that unless I just want to keep doing school over the summer, which I don't want to do. So <laughs> I either have to be okay with not completing every single worksheet in our workbook or continuing into summer. And um, yeah, we're just, once we reach 180 days, we will break for the summer. So yeah, that's how that's going to work for us as we round the bend to the end of the year. And then as far as some things that we have maybe added in or will be adding in in the next couple weeks, Easton, my oldest, is doing a couple book reading clubs with uh, a friend and then my brother has started one with him as well. My brother, he just started reading through the Sugar Creek Gang, book number one. They've only done one meetup so far, but that will continue and Easton loves doing those book clubs. And then he has another one that will be starting in the next couple weeks with a friend at Case for Faith with Kids. He has read um, a few of those books already and he will be starting that one shortly and they just meet, they just have a little Zoom meeting, they read together and then they discuss the chapters. So that's a fun thing for him to do with his uh, age group and uh, friends that are um, near his age. And then Zoe does Christian Light Education reading and there are only five light units with the course that she's in this year. She is about to start on light unit five. So she has almost completed her reading lesson for the year and she's doing exceptionally well with it. It has been a really great program for her. But once she has completed that light unit, I have bought Explored the Code books for her and for Easton as well, just to kind of give them some extra little practice with phonics and mastering those early on rules and things, she will start to just fill that in when she does her, she's continuing with the language arts and the language arts should take us to the end of the year, the Christian Light Education Language Arts Program. Um, the Explode the Code will just be some extra practice in there and then they will both continue their independent reading as well. Easton early on didn't learn a lot of those phonics rules, which he's a good reader. Um, it didn't affect his ability to pick up on reading at all, but I find that sometimes he could use a little bit of extra seat work maybe because <laughs> he kind of breezes through a lot of his other things pretty quickly which isn't a bad thing but then he uh, sometimes just needs some busy work to do while I'm working with his sister so I bought him a level to work on as well and also Zoe so that's something new that we will start filling in as well and we actually have uh, this week just started that and they're both enjoying it they both do like those workbooks and they're pretty pretty simple and self-explanatory so they can both sit there quietly and get some extra practice while I continue working with someone else. So, And then as far as Eden, she was really gung-ho about her workbooks in the beginning of the year and now she really wants nothing to do with them. So 
which is okay. She's only, she just turned four. So I don't honestly push preschool stuff too, too hard at this age. If she wants to do something, she's more than welcome to do it. We do a lot of just little color match activities and patterns and Play-Doh, kinetic sand, all of those things. And then um, otherwise, she's practicing her name right now, spelling her name, and she reads with us all the time. And so she's constantly hearing what we're what we're talking about. So she's learning regardless if it's sitting at a desk or playing with her Barbies on the floor while we're reading. So yeah, I just wanted to update you a little bit there. She was really into her workbooks in the beginning of the year, but she just, she doesn't really want much to do with them anymore. That's okay for right now. Um, maybe next year be a little bit different, but um, so yeah, overall, I think that's the, the most of our updates. Not a ton has changed. We are breezing through all the rest of our subjects and just a few pauses and, and changes in the midst of things here and there, um, just with everything else in our, in our family going on. But we are starting to feel settled and I almost kind of can't believe we're, we're officially halfway through the school year. It's kind of crazy to think about, but yeah. I'm sorry if this video was a little bit jumbled. If anybody has any questions, please drop them down below. I'm happy to answer any questions about Christian Light, Easy Peasy, Pennsylvania homeschooling. <laughs> so let me know down below if you have any questions and check out Devine and Shauna's channels also, which I'll link down below and also the playlist link. Uh, don't forget to go watch some other mamas updating you on what's going on in their homeschool. So thanks for being here. If you are new, I would love for you to stick around and um, yeah, we will talk very, very soon.